Microsoft Office 2010 installing Office 2010. Now, this is the beginning of our CBT Nugget series, and all the other CBT Nuggets are going to be based on whether you can install Office 2010. Now, we do want to give you a caveat at the beginning of this Nugget, and that is everybody might have a slightly different version of the Office 2010 suite that they're installing, whether you're using the Professional Edition, which includes everything and the kitchen sink, or maybe the Standard Version, or maybe even the Teacher Student Edition. But Office 2010 always has five core programs that we're going to be looking at. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Access. And so we're going to be taking a look at each one of these, but first, let's get started by installing it onto your computer. I love pulling software fresh out of the package. You know, you get the, the wrap off and you crack it open and you're like, mmm, brand new software, and especially when it comes to Microsoft Office products. So we're going to take a look at, before we can actually start installing this, some of the requirements that we need in order to get Office 2010 onto our computers or laptops or whatever you've got. We'll talk a little bit about product activation. It's a little different, but pretty much the same as what you're familiar with with most Microsoft products. And then we'll talk about once you're installing, I mean, there's obviously the what I call the one-click upgrade, you know, upgrade click it but there's also customization you can choose what you want to have installed you can even get this have Microsoft Office 2007 versions running or on your computer at the same time as Office 2010 versions there are a couple of exceptions but we'll get to that next now with any software program that you install there are always going to be some requirements necessary in order for you to run the program now there are always the minimum requirements which basically says to even get this thing to start up and run you need to have X Y or Z but of course we're gonna give you our recommendations on what you should use in order to get this to run at top speed now the first thing that we're gonna notice is that the processor hasn't changed in fact almost everything is exactly the same for Office 2010 as it was for Office 2007. If, you're, uh, if your computer that you're on is running 2007, it can run 2010. If you're getting any new laptops or computers, they'll be able to run Office 2010. If you have a multi-core processor, hey, guess what? It's going to be even better. But do you need it? No, not necessarily. And uh, a lot of times, you know, people say, wow, okay, well, what do we need? Well, number one, the minimum processor requirement to run your Office 2010 is the same as it was for 2007. It needs to be 500 uh, megahertz, 500 megahertz. Now, RAM is going to be important. That's your internal memory. That is going to be 256 uh, megabytes of internal RAM. Now, most of you, if you haven't already done so, you know that to run like Windows 7 or, or Vista, you need a gig or more. So most of you will be doing just fine if you have Windows Vista or uh, Windows 7 operating you have no problems with that now the operating system of course now some of you might not have those brand new computers you might not have purchased brand new software in fact you like your good old Windows XP that is the minimum requirement for the operating system you do need to have Windows XP running service pack 3 in order to run now we move to the interesting thing that if you're reading the box or, or talking and you've probably seen some people discussing it maybe out there on the uh, forums and that is the GPU the graphics processor unit the and what I like to say to GPU or not to GPU well to get the full system requirements they'll say that you do need to have a graphics processor unit or a GPU but what we want you to understand is it is not necessary in order to run your Office 2010. Now if you have it, boy, you're going to be great. It's going to perform graphic rendering tasks like charts in Excel, transitions in PowerPoint. It's going to do uh, that quite well. Um, you know, by the way, it doesn't mean you have a dedicated graphic cards because, you know, obviously if you have a laptop, uh, you're not going to have a dedicated, you know, special card. But a lot of them have a GPU that is part of the existing video card. Now, the way to find that out and to find out how exactly you're doing is to use a little program that will demonstrate for you called DX 
Diag, DX Diag, which is, of course, uh, the Microsoft DirectX uh, graphic processor check. And this is included as part of your Windows operating system, and uh, we'll show you exactly uh, how to do this. Now, again, this is just going to show you whether it's, it's running with type of uh, Microsoft DirectX and whether you have it. Now, there are a lot of really cool features in PowerPoint 2010 that you really need to make sure that you have a good high-end or at least a decent video card with the GPU uh, processor uh, available to you. So th that's just something to, to take a look at. But um, if you don't have the GPU that meets the requirement, don't worry, you can still use Office 2010. It's just, you know, obviously we always want to speed up uh, things. Oh, and one other thing, of course, uh, I forgot to mention, and we probably should, uh, you know, write this one down, is, of course, is what about the uh, hard drive? You know, so if I have my hard drive, what is the hard drive requirements? Forgot to write that on ahead of time, but that's okay. We'll do it. Um, you are going to need a minimum of two gigabytes on the average. So your hard drive, about two gigabytes, because that's what the program is going to need to run. That's the minimum. Now, of course, think about it. That means if you only have two gigs left on your hard drive and you suck it up with Office 2010, you're going to be in a world of hurt when you're trying to do anything else. So what we recommend is usually to have at least, you're going to want to have at least 20 plus going forward okay you want to have 20 plus gigabytes left on your hard drive because you're going to be saving things you're going to be utilizing things and you also want to make sure that you're not going to kill uh, your hard drive because of the paging file and some other technical stuff that uh, beyond the scope of this CBT nugget but uh, you know just trust me when I say if you got 20 plus gigs you're going to do just fine on your hard drive space now as promised I want to show you really quickly uh, how to run that DX Diag to check out on uh, whether your uh, computer is going to be able to handle uh, everything that's going on. So of course you come down here now your mileage may vary but on most operating systems Windows operating systems you can go to start find the run command in, in this case in Windows Vista in the in the classic version it's right here it would be down here on the side uh, in the other one and then Windows 7 is a little bit different but once you do the run just come in here and you type in DX Diag, DX Diag. It's basically Microsoft's DX Diag uh, diagnostic tool. You click OK. It uh, typically will ask you sometimes, uh, you know, hey, do you want to uh, check to see whether everything's digitally signed or not? Um, you can click OK or, or not, up to you. But under the diagnostic tool, you'll notice you have your system, which is basically all of your CPU, the uh, BIOS that's running, what processor, how much memory, I've got four gigs, uh, what your page file is running, and the, this is important, your DirectX version. In order for you to get all the bells and whistles running in Office 2000, you need to have DirectX 9 or above. And then for the GPU part, just go click on display and it'll tell you the device that is powering your display. In this case, this is my uh, graphics card, which is more than a, uh, you know, able to handle anything like that. And it'll also tell you whether you've got DirectX features enabled or disabled and you can, you know, change those things within your graphics uh, programs. Um, and you, of course, your mileage will vary depending on the type of uh, video card that you have. But this is a great uh, little tool to find out if you're like, man, do I have the right DirectX? I'm playing a game or I'm using software and it says I got to have this. Just go to DirectX uh, Diagnostic Tool, DX Diag, and it will tell you exactly uh, what's going on. So we'll exit here and get started installing our Office 2010. So now that you know what we need to do, go ahead and place the disk into the uh, DVD player. And of course, once I do that, it's going to come up here with our Microsoft Office Standard. Now remember, like I said at the beginning, we are going to install Microsoft Office Standard. Each different type of Office product, whether it's professional, whether it's standard, whether it's the educational student teacher edition, pretty much going to be the same thing except for what is available to you. Now something interesting here that they've done with the 2010 is the product key, well, you do that right up front. Now of course, you you are going to be able to activate this. You can wait to activate it, as we're going to see here in just a minute, or you can activate it right away. It's just up to you. 
uh, but again you will need to have that product key in place before you are even able to get the product loaded which is versus where you know you'd get through to near the end and please put in the product key and and, and move from there so in this case we're gonna go ahead and pause I'll put in the product key and I'll show you the results now I've gone ahead and I've grayed out um, this area right here so you don't see the actual key but you'll notice that what it will do now that it's validated that this is a, a correct key it will allow you to choose whether you want to activate the product online if you are connected to the internet or sometimes let's say you know for some odd reason you're at home maybe your uh, wireless routers down or your internet's down but you just still want to get some work done so you install it the good news is you will be able to use what is known as word starter or Excel starter which will allow you to view documents make some changes but you will every single time be asked about activating and you won't have the full functionality that you can expect uh, in those products so just something to consider uh, there but we're going to go ahead and click continue and move on once you click continue of course it is going to ask you about the Microsoft software license term standard with just about any product that you get software and uh, all they're just saying is is remember Microsoft isn't really a software company they're a licensing company they license you the rights to use their software and so that's really what you're paying for is the ability to install something on your computer that's going to help you out now you can go ahead by the way and uh, scroll through all this you can read for, through all of this and if you're a lawyer I mean I'm sure that will be simply fascinating but basically in a nutshell it just says that uh, we're protect you know Microsoft's protecting itself uh, you need to pay for this don't steal it uh, don't use the code and to develop your own office software yada 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 okay uh, most of us can just go ahead and just say yes I accept the terms of the agreement just understand if you don't want to accept the terms of the agreement you don't have to install office but we do so we're gonna go ahead and click continue now here is where you have a choice you can choose the type of installation now an upgrade means like in my case I have office 2007 running on this computer I can choose and go ahead and just click upgrade it'll go through and it will replace all of my products that I have that are available through the Office Standard 2010. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you are installing something that maybe you have more options on the new one than the old one, the only the ones that are similar, in other words, if let's say I'm installing uh, uh, St Office Standard 2010 which includes the Outlook and the Axis and all those things but my old computer um, I had something that had a publisher on it for 2007 well now because I don't have that perhaps in the one that I'm installing when I click upgrade hey publisher 2007 will remain it will only replace if I have a word which I do I have Microsoft Word 2007 well the office 2010 version of that of word will then replace that now if you say well wait a minute whoa time out Chris I don't know I'm not sure I really want to do that uh, no not a problem you can operate both of them side by side there's just two of them that will not work one of them is SharePoint and the other one is Outlook you cannot have both versions on the same computer so you can't have the 2007 which by the way the SharePoint was called Groove and uh, 2007 and then now use the SharePoint uh, workspace 2010 so those are the only ones that really have a problem now of course you can go ahead and click customize and we'll go ahead and do that if, by the way if you click upgrade boom you you go and it starts it does everything standard customize allows us to be a little bit more particular and that's why you're taking this uh, CBT Nugget series so you can learn these little tricks and tips plus if you're taking the exams I have a little bird telling me that they do want to make sure you know how to run previous versions of office as well as the current ones uh, so you might need to know this to upgrade the earlier versions we can do remove all the previous versions we have I can keep all the previous versions we have or I can be particular I can say well you know what I want to remove Excel but I want to keep my old Outlook um, I want to you know keep my old PowerPoint I want to keep my old publisher do do anything like that now notice when I do the Outlook I say you know what I don't want to remove the old version of Outlook 
it tells you there's important information about upgrading to Microsoft Outlook.